This region around the Pecos River, Rio Grande, Devil's River is a dramatic landscape. Deep, deep canyons that have just cut through this massive gray limestone with the water from the Pecos River, you know, and the tributary canyons all coming together. I love the sound of the canyon, Wren. How many times have you been down here? Uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. But I came out here the first time in 1989. And at that time, I just had no idea how my life was about to be changed from that experience. They are ancient towering stone cliffs that rise high above the Pecos River in far west Texas. And like she's done so many times before, archaeologist Dr. Carolyn Boyd leads her research team deep into a narrow canyon. Every time I come, I find something new. And the lighting is actually nice right now because it's damp and soft. Around 2,000 years ago, this rock shelter would have been used as a place for ceremony. So 2,000 years ago, they would have constructed scaffolding because this mural cannot be painted from the ledge. You have to have some kind of scaffolding in place to be able to get up to paint the really tall figures. The focal point of this mural near Del Rio and the centerpiece of all rock art in North America is something called the White Shaman. This is a story that tells about the creation of time and the birth of the sun. And they documented it on the wall sometime between 400 BC and AD 400. It's so sweet. I mean, putting, it's just mind blowing. <laughs> And even though Dr. Boyd has closely studied these fragile images for 27 years, it wasn't until high-tech digital photography and computer processing that she became the first person in the world to finally crack the code and understand the meaning behind these towering treasures. What we have here in the Lower Pecos is the Archaic Library of North America. These are the most ancient manuscripts on this continent, they hold information about the philosophy, botany, astronomy, mythology of peoples that lived here for thousands of years. In painstaking detail, Dr. Boyd's book explains how these murals were created and the stories they tell, hidden for thousands of years. The headquarters for this research is the Shumla School, not far from the Pecos River in Comstock, Texas. We are a driving force in the documentation of prehistoric art globally, and it's here, located in Comstock, Texas. And we can crack the code and are cracking the code as to what these are. We are starting to read these manuscripts. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Carolyn Boyd. Betty Shropshire. Oh, of course. So good to see you. Good to see you. Did you get your book? Yes, thank awesome. you. Awesome. <laughs> Her book has gotten a lot of attention and is bringing more people to this remote corner of West Texas that has become what must now be the world's largest art gallery, maybe even the world's largest library. Okay, this is kind of the, at this site, the, what do they say, piece de resistance, you know, it's the, it's the, the beautiful stuff, really something. There are 320 murals in Valverde County alone, and that's just what we know of today. How many were lost or that just haven't been discovered yet, we don't know. Look at the beautiful fine lines as this goes down. This figure is just amazing in its accuracy. In the book, I say that, um, you know, they woke up to the sounds of their children's laughter. They made plans for the future. They loved, they hated, they had losses, they mourned their dead, they rejoiced at the birth of a child. They were us. So we're looking at the paint layers on top. It's a writing system. Writing systems don't change that quickly. It's a way of communicating visually. It's a graphic vocabulary. It's oh. sweet. With knowledge comes responsibility. And once I realized that what we were dealing with were like ancient manuscripts, the oldest known books in North America, what are you going to do? 
at what point do you stop? How can you stop? You can't. It's our responsibility to preserve and protect this ancient library. It's been an incredible journey. It's humbling is what it is. I have thought about what am I gonna do when I physically can't get down there? Put yourself at that moment when you suddenly realize this is the last time I'm gonna be at the site. I'm not gonna go there right now. Why not? I don't want, I can't go there right now. No, I got too much work to do. No, that, we're not going there right now. There's nothing that's gonna keep me. I'm gonna keep going. And when that time comes, then I'll deal with it at that point. But that would be very hard. I got a lot of work to do before that time. I always wanted to be a time traveler, and now I am, you know, in a way. It may be a brutally rugged environment, but somehow, Hundreds of hand-painted images have weathered the ages, waiting, perhaps, for someone like Carolyn Boyd to crack their code and overcome centuries of uncertainty, merely to find out that the mysterious people who left these behind were no different than us. So in my book, I wrote, as archeologists, we too often define ancient cultures solely by the material remains. Without the art, they are yet a little understood and little regarded archaic population eking out a meager existence as best they could. But with the art, worlds change and wonder begins. <laughs>